Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Thanks for joining us. We're just going to give it a couple minutes to or a minute maybe to let people join and then we'll, we'll get going here so we can stay on time. So thanks again for, for tuning in. Seeing the number of participants slowly grow here. So we'll just give it another few minutes, a few seconds, and then we'll get going. Well, good morning. Again, thanks for joining us. I'm Steve Kramer. I'm the president and CEO of the Minneapolis Downtown Council and uh, happy to kick this off. And then I'm gonna turn it over to my colleagues, uh, Melvin Tennant from Meet Minneapolis and Kevin Lewis from Greater Minneapolis BOMA. Uh, I know these are, these are uncertain times for us. We've been thrown a little bit off stride by COVID-19 and we're trying to find our, we find our balance. Uh, but there are, are a few things that remain constant. And one of those is there will be road construction this year. So thank you to our colleagues at MnDOT for giving this that sense of, uh, of our permanency and constancy in a, in a really changing environment at the moment. And we're here to talk a little bit about some of those projects, especially as they will impact the, the downtown uh, over these coming months. So before I turn it over to Melvin, uh, I'm gonna just give a few, uh, a few quick instructions here. Uh, certainly feel free to use the chat function at the bottom of your, your screen during the course of the presentation. But if you have questions, that you'd like answered by our, our colleagues, our, our panelists from MnDOT, please use the Q&A function. And as soon as uh, Dave Akins and Aaron Tag are done with their presentation, we'll go to those questions and we'll answer as many of them as we, uh, as we can. So use the Q&A function. And with that, Melvin, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, first of all, Melvin Tennant with Meet Minneapolis, our Convention and Visitors Association. And certainly want to welcome all of our participants today to this webinar on our 2020 road construction. So it is uh, good to know that that progress is being made on some fronts, but uh, simply wanted to thank all of the various stakeholders that are represented today on this call. And just uh, the fact that we have three of our business associations working together is an indication of the uh, cooperation that occurs anyway, but we've really doubled down on that cooperation. And so we're Glad to be working together, uh, bringing you this today. Hi everyone, Kevin Lewis. I'm President and CEO of Boma Greater Minneapolis. And just to echo what Steve and Melvin had mentioned that uh, uh, our business organizations are uh, united in trying to communicate as much as possible. Um, you know, anytime that there's um, disruption in terms of construction that is sorely needed and so on. So this is just another one of those steps in trying to provide you all of those on uh, all of you on the call to provide you as much information as possible so you could take it back to your business, to your tenants, whoever uh, would uh, have value in getting this kind of information. So with that, uh, I'll turn it back to Steve and then uh, our presenters. Yeah, I think we're ready to go to the presenter. So Dana, take it away. All right, uh, Aaron Tag here with the Minnesota Department of Transportation and uh, here with Dave Eikens too. Um, and we're gonna present on uh, some of the road construction that we have going on uh, this summer around downtown Minneapolis. Um, you know, a lot of this has been planned for uh, many, many, many years. Um, started Some of these projects started years ago um, and obviously we're in uh, different times right now, but you know, as Steve uh, said earlier, um, you know, these projects are moving, moving ahead and, um, you know, we're, we're adjusting some of them uh, as we can uh, to kind of take advantage of some of the, the lower traffic volumes that are out there right now. So first slide for. All right. So the first one we're going to talk about is the 35W at 94 uh, downtown to Crosstown project, um, which is uh, going to be moving into um, uh, uh, 
fourth year of construction now. You can go on to the, the next slide. Yep, so here we are, we're moving into 2020. Um, we're, you know, essentially um, about two thirds time-wise uh, done with the project. Um, this summer, probably in the uh, June, uh, July timeframe, we're gonna be moving into the fifth and final stage of the project. So uh, we're moving very closely to completing this project and uh, the project is on time and on schedule uh, to be done in uh, the fall of 2021. Next slide. Yeah. So you will see some changes this year um, as we uh, progress the project. Uh, one thing uh, that you may have noticed if you have gone into downtown Minneapolis this week, uh, but I know many of us uh, aren't, um, is that uh, we uh, closed the ramp that we had opened early uh, last year. Uh, we opened that that ramp, the, the ramp that goes um, to Fifth Avenue uh, from northbound 35W and then from Fourth Avenue uh, to southbound 35W. Uh, that wasn't anticipated to open until the end of the project in 2021. Uh, we were able to get a lot of work done last year and open that early through the winter uh, with the caveat that at one point uh, we would need to come back and do some additional work to, to clean it up and finish it up. And uh, so we started that work uh, and that work is gonna go on through midsummer. Uh, at, at which point we'll be able to open that back, back up um, for, for the remainder of the project. Uh, further south down on the corridor uh, along Lake Street, uh, we start, started work uh, along that section um, to reconstruct Lake Street from a, a few blocks uh, west of 35W to a few blocks east of 35W uh, from Blaisdale to 5th. Um, this is gonna take two years of work um, and uh, Lake Street is gonna be essentially totally reconstructed uh, from curb to curb or really sidewalk to sidewalk, building face to building face along this section. Uh, so you're gonna see a lot of um, uh, traffic switches along this, this uh, period, uh, piece of Lake Street, um, that, you know, but we will always have one lane of Lake Street open in, in each direction. As we move into that fifth and final stage in June, you're also gonna see some uh, changes to traffic patterns on 35W. Um, the ramp from southbound 35W to 35th Street, which has been closed for a number of years, is going to open back up. Um, but then at the same time, uh, the uh, entrance from 46th Street to northbound 35W is going to close. And then the exit from northbound 35W to 36th Street is going to close. Um, as we move into the fifth stage of the project, uh, they're going to be complete with the work on the west side of the corridor. So they're going to shift all the traffic to the west and center uh, lanes of 35W and they're gonna start working on the eastern side of 35W. And with that, they won't have access to these ramps on the, on the east side of 35W. Um, there was a Q and A question about uh, Lake Street, how will the construction pair with the, the Kmart uh, Nicolette project? We're working with the city of Minneapolis uh, to kind of determine if there's any changes that need to be made to the reconstruction plans that uh, kind of facilitate uh, future um, redevelopment of that site. Next slide. Related to the 35W94 project, but a separate construction contract, uh, we have um, our drainage improvement project uh, down between 40th and 42nd Street on the east side of the freeway. Many people noticed the, the red silos there uh, that popped up a, a couple months ago along this section. Um, in this section, we're building six uh, very large underground uh, storage tanks for water. Uh, they, they, If you cut away the ground, as you can see in the upper right there, they essentially look like uh, you know, large silos that will be underground. Um, so we've, we've started work on these. These will take uh, a, few or, a few years to construct. Uh, this will help alleviate flooding that we often see uh, in this section of 35W around 42nd Street. Um, there will be less frequent flooding. What will happen is in extreme rain events, uh, storm water um, will flow into these uh, storage tanks um, that will hold four and a half million gallons of water. Uh, and then after uh, the storm tunnels uh, to the north clear out, uh, we'll pump that water out of these storage tanks um, 
and into the, the storm pipes. Next slide. And Dave's going to talk about a couple other projects. Good morning. Uh, uh, thank you for being here today. And uh, thank you for your time. And uh, so this is the Third Avenue Bridge. Um, it's a historic bridge that uh, was built in 1918. And uh, we're going to give it some tender, loving care over the next uh, uh, two and a half years. And uh, we're going to be doing... Uh, complete rebuild on the uh, driving surface, what we call the deck. And then underneath, we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, you maybe have seen some of, if you go over there, or if you're walking on Main Street, or if you're walking on those paths underneath there, you can see that some of the concrete is uh, peeling away. And so we're going to fix that. And so we've got a lot of work to do there. Uh, we're going to start on May 18th. We're going to close um, uh, we're going to reduce the lanes. There'll be a single lane in each direction. There'll be a what we call a dynamic transit lane in the center, which so during rush hour, uh, the buses will go into downtown and then then in the evening they will leave downtown. So it'll kind of shift based on what time of day it is. And then we'll have some room for walkers and bikers as well. And then in January, we're going to um, we'll be shutting it down for two solid years. And while, they, while we do our work and rebuild the driving service and do what we need to do underneath. And so we're gonna be sending the cars over to Hennepin Avenue. The bikes will be going over the Stone Arch Bridge and I think the walkers will also be going over to Hennepin Avenue. Um, so um, that's something you're gonna to wanna to, going to want to pay attention to because it, it, uh, it's gonna be a project that's gonna be around for about two and a half years. Uh, it's much needed. We're doing a lot of work on preserving and enhancing or restoring the, the historical aspects of this bridge. So I think when this is done, I think that everyone is gonna be pleased with how this looks. Um, Aaron, you want me to go on with uh, the next two projects? So there's one right now that the good news is that tomorrow we'll be done with this. That's the I-94 Nicollet to 280. I'm sorry, that's the uh, I-94 bridge um uh painting job right now that's got the hiawatha trail um closed and the the light rail is also closed between franklin and uh u.s bank stadium and i think uh the light rail folks are are doing some repairs of their own that are going to close it as well so we're doing some painting on that bridge um i'm told we could be done with this and things could be open um by the end of the week and um, I think we're scheduled to go to the 27th on that. So we should have things open by Monday. Um, there's a lane closure right over there between Cedar and 11th um, that hopefully hasn't been too inconvenient for anyone. Um, also, so we've got some work to do on I-94 Nicollet to 280. Now back in uh, 2017, we did um, some work on I-94 from Shingle Creek Park to Nicollet. And then last year we were went from 280 to um, Western Avenue in St. Paul, resurfacing, uh, putting a new layer of asphalt over the highway. Uh, we're going to do that uh, from right by the downtown between Nicollet and 280, and uh, we're going to need some weekend closures for that. That is not going to start until July, so we'll get you some more information on that when uh, when we get closer and we we know our schedules. So um, we I did include I believe. Uh, um, Dana from the uh, downtown council sent out some fact sheets for everyone that kind of touches on all all the uh, projects that we've got here today. Hopefully those will help or will be helpful to you and you can share those with your uh, co-workers and colleagues and employees or whomever. Um, so uh, I will uh, let Aaron continue with uh, Highway 5 and then we'll take questions after this is done. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Um, so another project we wanted to talk about um, today is the Around the Airport project. And this is a project that isn't, um, uh, you know, downtown Minneapolis, but affects a lot of uh, people going, uh, doing, doing, going to and doing work in downtown Minneapolis and having visitors uh, to downtown Minneapolis. So we wanted to touch on this project. Uh, this project and its impacts have changed considerably from when we were planning it. Um, we were expecting this to be 
uh, an extremely impactful project um, to travelers uh, to and from the airport and um, with the the low volumes of travelers right now um, it, it you know it hasn't had the impact that uh, we were expecting obviously so next slide um, so what are we doing uh, in this section uh, next slide and uh, on the northern half of this uh, project we're doing what we call um, uh, a concrete overlay um, or in spots where we don't have the ver vertical clearance uh, reconstruction. Uh, a lot of times when people hear overlay, they think of our uh, asphalt milling overlays where we take off a couple inches of asphalt and put back um, a couple new inches to make the road smoother. Uh, in, this, in this case with a concrete overlay, we're essentially building a new concrete road on top of the existing road that's out there. Um, so this is essentially uh, you know, building a road that will last uh, many, many decades um, into the future. And we really shouldn't even have to be out here doing pavement work for um, for quite a while. So um, we're trying to get in and get out and um, and save the, the uh, save having to have impacts in this area for quite a long while. Next slide. We're also doing a lot of uh, bridge repair and redeck work. Um, we have 12 bridges that we're either uh, repairing, uh, kind of doing spot repairs or redecks where we take the enti entire deck uh, down to the beams off uh, the bridge and uh, replace it. And again, those are you know repairs that will have um, uh, decades of longevity to them. Next slide. And then on the southern section of this uh, Highway 5 corridor, we're doing what we call concrete pavement repair. Uh, so going in and making spot repairs to the, the pavement sections that uh, need repair. So uh, a lot of work in this area um, and uh, obviously we were expecting to um, uh, have quite a few impacts with this project. We spent a number of years uh, working with the MAC and partners um, in and around the airport area uh, to try and figure out the best way to stage this project uh, so that we would uh, minimize the impacts that we have as much as we, as much as we can. Next slide. So uh, what we decided on, what we've uh, started to implement is directional closures of Highway 5. Uh, so right now uh, and, and until the mid-June timeframe, um, uh, we are going to be in the first stage of the project. And so we currently have eastbound Highway 5 closed uh, completely uh, from 494 up across the river uh, to Davern Street in, in St. Paul. Um, Vehicles going to Terminal 1 uh, have to come in uh, from the westbound 5 side. Uh, so you kind of have to loop around the airport on the west side, uh, kind of using the 7762 loop, or on the east side using the 35E and 62 loop uh, to get into the airport. And then when leaving the airport, um, you have to go westbound. Um, and then once you get to 494, kind of choose which direction you want to go. Um, next slide. As we move in uh, into the summer, uh, in the mid-June uh, to mid-July timeframe, uh, for about one month, um, we're going to have some additional closures up at the 62-5 uh, interchange. Uh, the biggest impact here uh, will be that if you are on uh, westbound Highway 5 coming out of St. Paul, uh, you won't be able to get onto 62-55. Um, so if, if you cross the river on, east, on a westbound five, uh, you'll have to continue all the way to either Terminal 1 um, or down to 494. Um, and then this will also affect uh, traffic that would be on westbound 62 wanting to go uh, westbound on five. They'll have to go up to 55 and essentially do a U-turn to, to come back on to, to uh, westbound five to get into Terminal 1 or uh, continue on, on five. Next slide. Uh, and then with the last stage of the project from approximately mid-July uh, through October, we're essentially doing the opposite uh, directional closure. So at this point, westbound Highway 5 will be closed and we will have eastbound uh, Highway 5 completed uh, and open to traffic. Um, and traffic will essentially use the opposite detour routes uh, that, that were being used in that first stage of the project uh, to get in and out of Terminal 1 and to get around the, uh, the closures. Next slide. Um, so 
you know, over the years as we were developing this project, we knew that uh, communication was going to be essential for this project. Um, you know, right now things have changed quite a bit from what we were expecting. Uh, hopefully, as we get towards the end of the project, uh, a lot of the the work that we did to prepare for this project we'll, we'll need to use again. Um, but as we looked at um, kind of impacts here, uh, the, the, the MSB airport really has a travel shed of about six hours. So they have people coming in from, uh, you know, as far away as, you know, Wisconsin, the Dakotas, Iowa, uh, to catch flights out of the airport. Uh, so reaching people kind of within this, this large radius was really important to make sure uh, that as people came in that they um, knew what to expect with construction. Uh, as we did uh, modeling uh, for traffic for this project, as well as kind of discussing this with our partners, uh, what we were going to tell people was that they should give themselves an extra hour to get to the airport. Obviously, with the, the really low traffic volumes right now, um, an extra hour isn't necessary, but even with the detours, it still takes an extra uh, 10 to 15 uh, minutes to get, to get around the airport um, and into the terminal. Um, and we have uh, a website for the project, uh, which we don't do very often with MnDOT, is having kind of a specific uh, branded website. It's aroundtheairport.com. Uh, so you can go there to get the latest traffic information. Um, and hopefully as we move later into the year, um, you know, that will become a, a more critical tool uh, for people to un understand the impacts. Um, and trying to communicate with people early and often um, the, the airlines were set up to send information out through their, their ticketing system. Uh, we, we started to do uh, some advertising around the project, um, trying to make as many people aware about the project before they headed to the airport, because uh, the best way to prepare for it was to, to really have a plan um, of how you were going to get there and giving yourself plenty of time to get there so that you don't miss a flight. Next slide. Um, and we had a lot of people we were engaging with. Um, you know, we have our, our normal set of people, uh, commuters and residents nearby, uh, but the air travelers and the airport, airport functions were really kind of a critical and a uh, different kind of uh, customer that we really need to figure out how to engage with uh, on, on this project. Um, uh, trying to, you know, with a with normal project, with a normal MnDOT project, you know, you, you reach uh, the commuters as best you can, uh, construction starts. There's people who, you know, didn't receive the message, but within a week, things pretty, uh, usually pretty well settle out. Um, you know, there will still be impacts, but the network uh, kind of uh, changes and people adjust their travel routes. Uh, with the airport, you have 35,000 people coming uh, to the airport uh, who may not have been to the airport ever before, or it's been many, many years since they were there. And trying to reach those people over and over every day uh, was going to make this quite a um, uh, uh, communication challenge. So trying to reach uh, as many of those people was going to be um, really important. Uh, and that is all we have for uh, updates right now. We have a so, couple of questions from Joanne, if you want to go ahead and answer those. Yep. Um, so the first one, it looks like, uh, Dave, I don't know if you want to try and handle this one. How will the detour from Third Avenue to Hennepin work with the Hennepin reconstruction closures? So um, the uh, I believe the Hennepin closures are farther south. Um, the detour is going to be um, if you're coming from the north, you'll get you'll get on East Hennepin there and and take it um, take it across the bridge. And then if you're coming from the south, I think you'll get it, get on it, um, like, you know, wherever first or Washington or, or wherever you're coming from. But I think that the work on Hennepin Avenue that the city's doing is over by Target Center now. It's moved, moved that direction, if I'm not mistaken. Aaron, Aaron, you know a little bit more about that work than I do. Yeah, and the city and Minneapolis, or the city and uh, Hennepin County and MnDOT have been coordinating uh, kind of the, the traffic um, detours and routes for a number of years now. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things going on in downtown Minneapolis, but uh, everything, everyone's doing kind of the best they can to coordinate these projects and um, not, not have overlap, uh, overlapping impacts from them. 
Um, a second just, question. Just, just oh. staying on 30 Avenue Bridge for a second. Sorry, I know there's some other questions. Um, could, could one of you talk about what the communicate, you, Aaron, you did a good job of talking about the communication plan for the Highway 5 project. What will that be for the 3rd Avenue Bridge, both the, and the temporary closure or the, the lane limitation this year and then the full closure for 21s? So we've had a very, thank you, Steve, for asking that. Um, we've had a very aggressive uh, effort uh, that we've started um, a year ago. It's sort of been kind of uh, slowed down a little bit, but we have uh, before, um, you know, in the summer and the winter, uh, before we were, uh, uh, had to stay in, in our houses, um, we've been uh, to many of the businesses, many of the doors, many of the the, the neighborhood associations, na uh, all of the business associations over there. We've been door to door at the at the um, uh, main street there, St. Anthony Main. Um, we've we've uh, had many of meetings. Um, we've um, uh, we did have some uh, more aggressive plans that have sort of been been uh, scuttled a little bit. Um, but we're we're adjusting and uh, 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 finding other ways to reach people. Um, we have an email list uh, that we use for the 35 at 94 uh, project that we've been updating people on on Third Avenue. We've started including that there. So we have had a you know a very aggressive effort, and um, and I think you will see you know more things. And uh, we're, I think we've been to a lot of the places. I know I've personally been to a lot of doors and there's been about five other of my colleagues that have done, have as well. So we're working very hard on that and that's important to us. And there's gonna be a, there's a website, there's a hotline. Um, so there's just a lot of opportunities here. And then there was another question about uh, Highway 5 and, um with the lower traffic volumes and uh, still keeping social distancing in mind, is the Highway 5 project able to move uh, more quickly? Um, there was some prep work uh, for the, the project that we were uh, planning to do that uh, we skipped that allowed us to advance up uh, the, the eastbound closure. Um, and so that's essentially moving the whole for project forward a couple weeks. Um, we're also looking at opportunities when we can have lane closures um, or closures that um, you know really won't have uh, the impacts that they would um, uh, during normal times uh, to take advantage of um, doing extra work or work during the daytime. Um, you know, allowing crews to work during the daytime versus you know a lot of times uh, they're doing work at night um, is more efficient and safe uh, for the crews out there. So. Uh, looking for opportunities with the low traffic volumes to have additional lane closures or, or closures. We're, um, we're definitely looking for all the opportunities we can. Right, Aaron. And I think there's going to be two closures on Highway 5 uh, and 494 West uh, starting tomorrow and one on Monday that we wouldn't probably be doing if uh, things were, if traffic levels were normal. Question about 35, if I could, if if we look at the completion of activity in 2020 and then look at 2021, what what will be left and going into 21, will 35W continue? Yep. Um, so as we move into, so one thing that people will start seeing um, this year is where they're getting close to completing, I guess I'll call the bridge structure for the Lake Street Transit Station. Um, so starting this year, you're going to see the, the station contractor move in and start building the actual station components of the Lake Street Transit Station for the Orange Line. Um, and so that, that work is going to go um, all the way till the end of the project. Um, on the 35W level, you'll see a big kind of canopy uh, kind of emerge from that area. Uh, on the southern end of the project, um, they're going to be working on uh, the east side of the corridor there. Um, to get those uh, really the, the, the eastern side of the northbound lanes constructed, very similar to what they've been doing over the last year on uh, the west side of the corridor. Uh, and then up kind of in the, the northern section, they'll be f finishing up, um, uh, right now a lot of the work's in the middle and kind of finishing up the retaining walls and bridges uh, for, for those uh, connections. You'll probably see things getting closer 
um, to complete. Um, but uh, as you, we're going we're gonna to always have kind of limited capacity through the corridor at some point in the project. So uh, there will probably be at, at points things that um, look like they're getting close to complete, um, but they won't be able to open uh, until we get kind of that full capacity through the corridor. Dan Howison has a question for us. Uh, what are the big multi-year projects that are coming after these big projects are done in 2021? Um, I'll let Dave chime in um, too. Um, but you know, probably the the biggest multi-year projects coming up are probably ones down on 484. We have a quarters of commerce uh, project down along there uh, that will start um in the, the mid 20s um and you know so that will be a multi-year project they'll have impacts you know to 494 uh we really i'm trying to think of you know we also will at some point have the 252 94 quarters of commerce projects on the north side of downtown um uh, that is you know still a number of uh years out for construction so we will we probably won't have uh at least in the the west metro uh too many of those um you know big multi-year projects in 22 we are going to have a lot of work on uh hiawatha avenue 55 uh kind of between downtown down to 62 so that that work has been waiting for the 35w project to get complete uh, so we have uh, some major bridge work um, and pavement work um, and uh, redoing the Hiawatha and Lake uh, intersection interchange um, that will be coming up. Uh, anything else, Dave? No, I think the I-494 uh, I between Highway 169 and the MSP airport is the big one. Um, we've got, the, we have a vision for that, which is to add a min pass lane and then um, reduce the uh, uh, reduce the um, um, turn the Portland Avenue uh, enters into a four, uh, four, two on and two off ramps, and then close the on and off ramps at Nicollet and Twelfth. Um, we've got that in the plans, and then there also I think something that people will be interested and excited about is that we, we're preparing to do the. Uh, a uh, new inner uh, the the new um, ramp from 35 north to 494 west. So uh, what we don't know we have a plan we have we don't have a, we have a vision. We have to figure out um, we have some money we don't have all the money we need. So this is going to be potentially spread out over many years. I'm not sure how long that will be, and there'll be more. This will become clearer I think in the summer um but uh so that that will be a project that will will be noticeable and and have some great improvements but we'll also have to put up uh, or cope with um uh some ch some uh, uh closures on 494 over a uh, several year period of time uh and then there was another question uh from uh dan about um has MnDOT continued any conversations or federal study grants on the LID proposal uh, that was uh, greatly discussed a few years ago? Um, LIDs, land bridges, uh, things like that, you know, are things that are, um, you know, very much on our, our radar and mind. And uh, we know that there's a lot of proposals out there. We really have to kind of look at um, each one uh, kind of in a, a, a specific case to see, um, you know, how how the uh, kind of funding for those uh, could come come together and you know what the impacts out of those um, might be um, you know the the 94 project uh, the rethinking 94 project is um, seeing how those might be considered and um, uh, so so those are yeah still on our mind um, but we don't have anything necessarily uh, concrete uh, moving forward right now uh, and then another question will there be any new uh, fee-based express lanes added to and from downtown Minneapolis? Um, and the answer is yes. Uh, so as part of the 35W at 94 project, we are uh, constructing min pass lanes in both directions. Um, right now they end down at uh, 43rd Street uh, where the Crosstown project ended. Um, so those will be extended up um, essentially into downtown Minneapolis. And so uh, min pass uh, paying users will be able to use that as well as HOVs 
uh, in the many, many buses uh, that use um, use this corridor. So uh, the buses will actually have a new um, transit only uh, ramp that will connect um, the connection uh, into downtown Minneapolis um, to 12th Street. Um, and so they will have a more direct route uh, in and out of downtown Minneapolis on 12th Street. And then they'll be set up right in the center of 35W. And so they'll be able to get right into those min pass lanes uh, to con continue their journey uh, down south. Um, uh, it was part of the Orange Line. They're building the new transit station at um, in Lake Street. Uh, and not only will the Orange Line buses be stopping uh, at that transit station, but really uh, any of the express buses um, will be able to stop there. And in the peak out of that's about 100 buses an hour. So that will be a um, pretty great um, uh, transit uh, uh, reliability and uh, frequency for uh, customers at that Lake Street station when um, uh, when that project is over. And Aaron, that Orange Line BRT and the, the free improvements are all continue to be totally synced up. There's no discontinuity between those projects at this point. Yep, that's uh, that's correct. Um, and then another question, how is MANDOT continuing to engage the autonomous vehicle conversation and strategies and how does uh, it related to these long range uh, structural changes, improvements uh, to downtown related highways? Um, we have a um, connected and autonomous vehicle office at MINDOT. And so they're, um, you know, they're kind of at the forefront of how uh, connected and autonomous vehicles might impact, um, you know, impact the world and um, how people travel. Um, and so we are keeping a, a close eye um, on how those uh, might uh, impact. I'm, and another project that I'm working on is uh, the 35W North Gateway study, which is kind of looking at uh, 35W uh, from where the downtown to Crosstown project ends in downtown up to uh, County Road C in uh, Roseville. Um, this is a 35W section that uh, it's really the last section that hasn't been rebuilt and uh, the pavement is getting old here and a lot of the bridges are getting old and over the coming decades it's going to need to be reconstructed. So coming up with a vision for that corridor. Uh, but as part of that, uh, a couple, few months ago, uh, we had a uh, con connected and autonomous vehicle workshop uh, trying to kind of bring all our different partners together to talk about um, how uh, the emergence um, of connected and autonomous vehicles might change uh, what kind of infrastructure we need, um, how it will change traffic patterns. And, you know, right now, the you know, there's not a lot of clarity on how it will impact things or really a lot, of, a lot of it depends on the timing of uh, how those vehicles change um, and how the how they change people's uh, travel patterns. So, you know, it has both pros and cons or uh, negatives and uh, positives opportunities uh, for how it could, um, you know, help move more people or less people or do it with less infrastructure what kind of infrastructure will changes we'll need. So we're, but we're keeping a close eye on all that stuff. And then um, another question, are there any plans to put a min pass lane on 94 in the future? Um, 94 between the downtowns right now, we're studying that uh, as part of the rethinking 94 um, uh, project and uh, similar to that 35W corridor, the 94 corridor is getting old, the pavement, um, you know, still the original pavement underneath uh, will need to get replaced, um, you know, over the coming decades, along with a number of bridges. So uh, looking at, uh, as we do that, um, you know, what does 94 look like for the future? Um, and so um, uh, they are uh, working through the environmental phase, coming up what, what we call the purpose and need for the project uh, right now. Um, but as they move forward, you know, it's likely that uh, you know, uh, min pass considerations would be uh, under consideration there. Uh, and then similarly, uh, they're doing a study uh, to the north of downtown um, along the 94 uh, and uh, uh, corridor to see, you know, if min pass uh, lanes would uh, make sense in that corridor as well. All right. Well, I, th I think we've run out of, of questions. So let me just start the closing out here by uh, David and, and Aaron for today. And thanks to everybody who, who joined the webinar. It's very
good information. Um, I happen to be a South Minneapolis resident, so I commute on 35, and it's really remarkable to see the, the way that project is unfolding. And, uh, you know, I think it really will be a 21% freeway with, with uh, the train facility in, in the middle. So I'm looking forward to the project. I think Third Avenue Bridge is going to be an impact for sure, but we'll communicate out. And uh, I think point about the impact of that feeding into the Henson project, which is still under construction at that point, is something we need to all be conscious of. But uh, again, as you said, Dave, much, much needed investment in that, in that, in that bridge as well. So again, thanks everybody. And with that, let me turn it over to Melvin and Kevin for their, their uh, comments as well. Thanks, Steve. And, uh, and again, I would certainly uh, thank Aaron and David for, for a great presentation. It was very enlightening to me because uh, many of us in the uh, hospitality and tourism industry are, are making plans even during this, this crisis for the reopening of downtown and understanding ways in which we can appropriately uh, re-begin to welcome uh, visitors back to our city. So this was, again, helpful. Uh, I want to just, just thank you and certainly appreciate being part of this forum today. And my only comment would be use the resources that Aaron and David and their teams are providing the links to the website or um, if you want information pushed out on a weekly basis, there's all sorts of means to to get that type of information because that's that will be as fresh and up to date as you're going to find about closures and so on. So I urge everyone on this call to to uh, to put those uh, resources to work for you. And I think to that point, Kevin, there was a question earlier about whether we can send links out and folks who had signed up for the webinar, we certainly can do that as a follow up along with the fact sheets that went out. Great advice. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful afternoon. It looks like it's a glorious day out there and uh, stay safe and stay healthy. And uh, thanks.